So welcome to Applied Mathematical Finance. Uh, I'd like to continue our section, our session on convexity adjustments. So we are here, we talked about convexity adjustments. And yeah, the discussion started by the observation that many financial products pay a certain index in units of a certain asset and they fit very well together in the sense that the index is a martingale if you choose the corresponding payment unit as the numeraire. So that leads to the definition of a natural payoff. So the situation is a little bit like this. We have some index here and say we pay a function of the index as if it is an option. If it's just a linear product, we just pay the index and we pay this index in units of another product. Yeah? So we pay it here in units of N. And the nice thing is that this index X is a QN martingale. And we observe that this situation holds in really surprisingly many cases. Yeah? The equity forward, the equity option can be written this way. Cost currency forward, cost currency option is of this form, the floater, the caplet. And we also saw that the swap and the swap chain is of this form. If you choose here, for example, the annuity as the numeraire, yeah, then the swap rate is um, a martingale and you can reformulate the value of the swap as paying the swap rate in units of the annuity. We already saw two examples where this does not hold. One example from a later section is the Quanto. So the Quanto caplet here, which pays a foreign index, so that is here our index, but in a wrong unit, not in the foreign currency converted to my currency using the FX, but just using a constant conversion factor. So there was something going on here and we saw that this led to an adjustment Yeah, where we had to work a little bit, we had to introduce an additional model for the forward FX rate and we got such an adjustment factor here. The other motivating example was the forward rate fixed in arrears yeah, or maybe a nicer interpretation, the forward rate paid in advance where we had the index here, the forward rate, but somehow paid at a non unnatural time, yeah, the wrong time. And if you work this out, it leads to a convex payoff function of the forward rate in correspondence with the natural payoff unit, and that led to the term convexity adjustment. So let me now continue with the general formulation. It's a little bit the, the end of our last session, so it's a little bit recapitulation to start here again. I would like to derive a little bit of general adjustment, a general formula for the case when we have an index that is a martingale under the QN measure. So if paid here in the natural unit, yeah, um, I pay the index in the natural unit, I call then the value, the payment V subscript N. And I like to find an adjustment if I pay this index if, or a function of this, this index in some unnatural unit, say M. So I call that value now V subscript N. And consider the situation where we know an analytic formula, for example, no, Black Scholes formula, Bachelier formula whatever, for the case when we pay in the natural unit, can we find some adjustment to that formula 
when we pay in the unnatural unit. So what is V subscript M observed in T0, observed in zero? Okay, so maybe that's a small typo here. Okay, I should maybe add that. I assume T0 is just zero. Yeah, so that's here my evaluation time, T0. So the first thing to notice here is that the payment time in this formulation doesn't play a role. Yeah, because if you write the evaluation under QN, you see that this here is a QN martingale. M is a traded asset, N is my numeraire. So if the index is fixed in capital T, it doesn't matter if it is paid at T star. If I express it with the unit in which I pay, could be a zero copper bond, then I can here replace the T star with the fixing time. So M and N already encode, also encode somehow the payment time. Yeah, now to the question. I have the value if I pay in the natural units, so V subscript N, may be given by some formula. So let's just evaluate F of X of capital T, take the expectation under QN, multiply it with the Dumaria N of T. And I'm interested in finding the value V N, which I can write here with the other measure, QM, or I can also write it with the, the natural measure, QN, but then I use here the unnatural payoff, so that guy is F of XT multiplied with M of T. Yeah? So you have inside setting, you have the ratio of the unnatural pay of unit divided by the numeraire, which is the natural pay of unit. Yeah, can we find an adjustment that expresses this VM in terms of the VN? Yeah, this is trivial if you consider this here as a stochastic process. So first, if you plug in the definition of the value process V subscript M, N, it is VN multiplied with V with M, the unnatural payment unit, divided by the numeraire. Okay, and yet now you can write this here as a stochastic process. So it's initial value plus the integral over the differential. Okay, and since I have replaced the Vm with the Vn, it is the initial value. It contains here the valuation formula using the natural unit. So apart from this here, I have here the natural valuation formula. So if you now take expectations, so you take here expectation, this is a constant. Yeah? It means that you take expectation of that part. If you now take expectation, you will get Vm on the left-hand side and you have a Vn on the right-hand side, both evaluated in zero, plus the expectation of this part here. So what we do here from there to there is we take expectation, and I also yeah, multiply with the numeraire in zero to get the corresponding value. So one of these numerias here is canceling, yeah? So this guy is canceling and you see it's just 
adjust the other valuation formula with the ratio of the numerators in zero. Of course, if you play, pay twice as much, yeah, then the value is twice as much. That's just this ratio here. And then we have an additional part. And this additional part depends here on this differential, the differential of the natural valuation process relative to the numerator multiplied with the change of numerator. Since these two parts here are martingales, yeah, so they are zero dt plus some dw, uh, if we consider E2 processes, if we apply the differential to the product, the only thing that is left is the second order term, which gives us a dt term. So I can replace this part here, yeah, since both are martingales, I can replace the dxy uh, with the dx dy. So I see that the adjustment is just an instantaneous covariance term of the value process and the change of numeraire. And this we call then the convexity adjustment. Okay, so that was what we did last time. So I already gave you the definition. Yeah. I consider this part here now the convexity adjustment. And I would like to continue and elaborate a little bit on this. Because uh, this is a little bit unsatisfactory. Yeah. I do not know what this expression is. Yeah. Actually, I have to calculate an expectation and it looks even more complicated than my starting point. Yeah, Just calculate an expectation of the payment in the unnatural unit. So just calculate the expectation of this part here. Looked even simpler than what we have here. First to small interpretation. So from this equation, we see that the convexity adjustment is somehow a covariance term. So this here is the instantaneous covariance. So if this here would be some sigma dw1, and this here would be some, say, sigma2. Yeah? So this is here the sigma1 dw1, and this here is a sigma2 dw2. So what I have here is a sigma1, sigma2, rho1, 2, the correlation between dw1 and dw2, dt. So this is something like an instantaneous covariance. And if that is zero, yeah, then there is actually no adjustment at all. And Another interpretation is that what we have done here is actually a change of measure. So I can reinterpret the change of the payment unit, so the change of the numeraire, as a change of measure. So you know this is Gersanov theorem that is behind this, so you can interpret this factor that appeared there. Yeah? So the M of T divided by N of T, yeah? M of capital T divided by N of capital T, multiplied with N of little t divided by M of little t as the radon equidem derivative yeah? corresponding to your change of measure. So instead of changing the payment unit, yeah, you could also say that you have changed the measure. To elaborate on this, let's first make yeah, an assumption. Assume I know a little bit about the stochastic processes. Assume that the two guys are log normal processes. This is just an example. Um, this example, relates, for example, the situation we had for the quantum adjustment. So for the quantum, we made such an assumption. 
And you see that what we derived there actually also holds here in general. Still, what we will do now is a little bit unsatisfactory, um, but uh, surprisingly, yeah, we can we can even improve on this. So first, let's have a look how this adjustment looks like if we assume log normal processes. So the following lemma will be useful. Assume that X and Y are martingales. For example, you can think of X being the V M divided by N uh, and the, sorry, V N. So you can think of X being the V N divided by N, the natural payoff, and the Y being the M divided by N, so the unnatural payment unit divided by the numeraire under QN. So you can think of this situation we had before. And assume these guys are martingales and we have that dx dy, the guy that appears there in our adjustment, is x times y, sigma x, sigma y, rho x, y, dt. So exactly the stuff that I've mentioned. So for example, we have this if the dx, okay, it's a martingale, so it's a sigma x, x, dw, say dw1, and the y is a sigma y, y, dw2. So at the end, we have the dw1, dw2. This is the rho x, y, dt. Yeah? So correlated, instantaneous correlation, the correlated Brownian motion. Then x times y is not a martingale, but I can make x times y a martingale if I multiply with some adjustment. Let's define z to be x times y multiplied with the exponential integral from little t to capital T sigma x sigma y o x y dt. And observe this integral here the variable little t is here on the lower bound. So it's the integral from little t to capital T. And that's the variable that defines here the t. So this means if you look at z of capital T, okay, it's the integral from capital T to capital T. So it's zero. So it's exponential of zero. It's one. So I have that at capital T, oops, at capital T, Z is actually X times Y. So it's, it is an adjustment that keeps the final condition, Z is equal to X times Y, but it makes Z a martingale. So this holds for the situation I just sketched on this upper right corner on the slides. For example, where we have these log normal processes. Well, let's um, yeah, let's quickly go through the proof. Okay, so what's going on here? plus x times y differentiating the exponential, which gives me the exponential again, but the inner derivative is now minus, because I'm differentiating with respect to the lower bound, minus sigma x, sigma y, rho x, y, dt. So if you now plug in differential of x times y, this gives me x dy, y dx, dx dy. So this gives me an x dy. So this is my x dy. 
but multiplied with the exponential. This gives me an y dx, so the y dx, but also here multiplied with the exponential. And it gives me a dx dy. So this is a sigma x, sigma y, rho x, y dt multiplied with the exponential. Since it's log normal, multiplied with x and y. So this is exactly this term here with, with a plus. Yeah? So this part here is canceling with this part here. If that here is multiplied with the exponential. So you see the second order term cancels due to the, my small adjustment factor. And now X and Y were martingales. So you have a zero DT here, a zero DT here. So Z is a martingale. Okay, so I can make the X times Y a martingale with this adjustment factor. So I have the same final condition, but now, so now I have a stochastic so process that has the same final condition, the same final value. I can now apply this to the situation we had for the convexity adjustment. So X is the natural payoff divided by my numeraire, which is a martingale under QN. Y is the unnatural payoff divided by my numeraire, which is a martingale under QN. What I have to look at is the stochastic process or the expression dVn divided by n multiplied with dm divided by n. And I have that this is Vn divided by n, m divided by n, sigma Vn of t, sigma mn of t, rho of t dt. Okay, so I can plug this in to my formula such that the value of the financial product that pays in the unnatural unit, which can be written here as Vn divided by n multiplied with m divided by n, yeah, my change of payoff unit. And now, consider this here as my z of t. Yeah? So this is a martingale. If I interpret here a factor that is equal to one, which is actually this integral from capital T to capital T, yeah, dt. So I just interpret that this guy is there. So then this is a martingale. So if this is a martingale, it's the value of this guy, this set of capital T observed instead of capital T observed in zero. So that's Vn of zero divided by N of zero times M of zero divided by N of zero. But now multiplied with my adjustment factor evaluated in zero. So multiplied it with my adjustment factor in zero. Let me maybe work this out here. I have the value in unnatural unit. And I know from the universal valuation theorem that this is the payoff in capital T divided by the numeraire in capital T. And from there, take the expectation because that guy is a martingale. Okay, so what I'm doing now here is, let me replace this with what it pays, yeah? So it pays a function of the index multiplied with M of T, okay? So then let me replace this M of T with an N of T, 
Yeah? So I write here an n of t. So I have done something wrong. So I have to multiply with an m of t divided by an n of t. Okay, so there's are now many, many guys floating around here, yeah? but you see this here is going away and it's just the index and the unnatural unit divided by the numeraire. Okay, nothing had happened. So, but now you see that this here is the payoff in the natural units, which we just called VNT. So I have this. Okay, next step is that I assume that this whole stuff is multiplied with an integral from capital T to, and now let's say there is here a capital T, and then we have the sigma x, sigma y, rho dt, and from that we have the exponential. Okay, so this integral capital T, capital T is zero, this whole exponential here is one, there is no problem. So I have just modified all the stuff and it's still the same, but now, you know, if you consider this T here, as the variable of the stochastic process, and this t here on top is fixed, this object is a martingale. Because I've just proven that in the in this lemma, yeah, because this is exactly the correlation covariance adjusting factor mm, that adjusts the covariance of these two guys. This is a martingale. So I can plug in zero, yeah. So I can drop the expectation operator and plug in a zero for all these guys here, all the green guys. Okay, and you have the value in zero multiplied with the integral. Okay, maybe I make this a bit nicer here. Yeah, so this is the exponential multiplied with the exponential of the integral from zero to t. That is what's happening in this line. Okay, so maybe I should have been a little bit more explicit on this uh, slide. And next step is from here to here. Yeah, I have looked at the relative values because I'm considering the universal pricing, the universal valuation theorem. So now I multiply with n of zero. So if I multiply with n of zero, so from here to here, I just multiply with n of zero. So then there goes away an n of zero on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. And I have that the value in my unnatural unit is the value in the natural unit multiplied with adjusting the scaling of the units, if they have a scaling of the units, adjusting the covariance of the stochastic processes, unit change, and natural value process. So this is already a nice result. Yeah, If I know something about the stochastic processes, I can express the change that happens analytically. Yeah, So there's one change related to the scaling of the unit that has changed, and another change related here to the covariance. Yeah, so I have nicely here an adjustment in terms of the integrated instantaneous covariance. But what is a little bit unsatisfactory is that it is the covariance of the value process, so the VN, and my change of payment units, Yeah, the M divided by N. So the value process could be, for example, a Black Schulz formula, a Bachelier formula. So you have to derive the correlation of this M divided by N to uh, the Black Schulz formula divided by N. That looks complicated. So what I don't like about this result here is that it's required to know the value process. And that one actually depends on, of course, the function F. Yeah, so recall here, this guy here, yeah, VNT, which appears here in my correlation. So this thing, 
Yeah, what is the VNT? The VNT is at least at capital T, it's the F of X of T times N of T. Okay, and the little t is, yeah, I divide this by the numerator. So this goes away and I take the expectation of this. So if I place a little t here, it is multiply with the numerator in little t and take the expectation of this. So it means that this guy here is a complicated object and you have to know now the covariance of this and somehow it looks as if this depends on the F. Okay, for European options, which means I just look at something which is the expectation of V at a capital T, there is a very nice, very surprising result. You can remove this dependency. And I can write a convexity adjustment that is independent of the function F, of the payment function F. So for a call option, for a put option or whatever complicated F there is inside, I know the adjustment. And that sounds really strange. So what's actually happening is I can derive, if I do have some uh, additional knowledge about the underlying process, I can derive an adjustment of the underlying process. So that's just repetition here. So expression in equation 95 is a little bit unsatisfactory because it depends here on the Vn divided by n. And remarkably, we may remove this dependency by looking at the underlying process, by adjusting the underlying process. And here's the theorem. So let X be my index. N is my natural payoff unit. M is my unnatural payment unit. All three are to stochastic processes. My N and my M, they are Numerias, so I can look under QN or I can look under QM. And now assume that I know how my stochastic process X, so this here is my X, how my stochastic process X changes if I apply the change of measure, if I move from QN to QM. And to make the theorem a little bit more general, I allow that I know this change for some other variable, for some coordinate transformation. So assume there is a y and the x is a g of y. And I now know that under qn, I have the drift mu. Under qm, I have the drift mu plus gamma and the assumption, so this is the assumption here in the theorem, is that this gamma is deterministic. So for example, if you have a Bachelier model, yeah, uh, the G, this coordinate transformation is the identity, the, the Y is equal to X, yeah, because that is already here the Bachelier model, okay? And you just, assume here that moving from N to M is a deterministic adjustment. So then there comes the surprising result. Let V of X zero, which is the initial value of the stochastic process X, sigma, which is a parameter describing the model. Yeah. So actually here our sigma Y. F, which is my payoff function in the payment, yeah? Could be the identity for just a forward, could be maximum of x minus k and zero for a call option, whatever, any f. And m 
which is the unit in which I pay. So I have the initial value, the model parameter, the payoff function, and the unit in which I pay as an argument to my valuation formula. And this is now a general valuation formula. So it is numerea at evaluation time times expectation of f of xt times m of t, the unit divided by the numerea of t. Then I can express this valuation formula using the initial value of the stochastic process, my model parameter sigma, my payoff function f, and my unnatural payment unit m as the valuation formula using now the natural unit n, the same payoff function f, the same model for x, but now with a modified initial value, x tilde. So that's a funny result, yeah? You can use your evaluation formula, for example, Black Schultz formula. And if you do not value under the natural unit, but the unnatural unit, this is the same formula as for the natural unit. So it's this formula here, but now with a modified initial value. You just have to modify the initial value. And this modified initial value is given here. So it's actually the previous initial value plus the integral over this change of the drift. And since I have a change of coordinate here, it is the initial value of X. So I have to apply the change of coordinates. So this is G of G inverse of X zero plus the integral of this drift. Okay, so you see, yeah, maybe this is all trivial. I can consider the integral over gamma, which is inside the stochastic process as a change of the initial value. So what we have written here below is that I have a changed initial value in Y, which is the previous initial value plus the integral of the change in the drift. Okay, so that's uh, a little bit nice, yeah, because it allows us to move this change of payment unit, which is here on the outside, it allows us to move it in the inside of the function f, yeah, and of course also the expectation here, yeah, so we move it in the inside. So you see that under certain model assumptions, so the model assumptions are that we know how the change of payment unit acts on the stochastic process uh, and it acts in a certain coordinate in a deterministic way. Then I can translate our adjustment into an adjustment of the initial value. And if we are, for example, in the context of interest rates, this adjusted initial value is then sometimes also called convexity adjusted rate. For the special case where we have log normal processes, so like the situation I have discussed before, I can rewrite this theorem a little bit. So same situation as before, I have here my index, I have the natural payment unit N, the unnatural payment unit M. So now assume that X is a log normal process. So if X times N divided by M is a QN martingale, it means that X is a QN martingale. No? So it is that DX is just a sigma X DW under QN. 
And if the dx dm divided by n is of this form, which we had for the value process before, so x times m divided by n times gamma dt. Yeah, so then this gamma is exactly the change of the drift if you move to log coordinates. Yeah, if you take the logarithm, it will be exactly the situation you have here. Yeah, so the g will be the logarithm and then it's the gamma is exactly the change of drift. Yeah, then you have the situation of the previous theorem. So our theorem 212 folds. And now I'm in log coordinates. So my G is the exponential function. So the definition of my X tilde, my adjusted rate is my X times, so multiplied with the adjustment factor exponential integral gamma of t dt. Okay, so we will see this is exactly this part here when g is the exponential function and g inverse is the logarithm. Okay, so then this will be exponential of that multiplied with exponential of that and exponential of that is just x zero multiplied with exponential of that. Yeah, okay, so this, so this here is a very, very nice uh, theorem. And it will explain the formula you get for the quanto. It will explain the formula you will get for the um, forward rate in arrears. Yeah, all these guys can be derived from here. You just see it is an adjustment to the initial value. And I have another example, which is the CMS adjustment, which is also very famous, which you can also map onto this theorem, or if you look at locked normal processes to this version. So for the previous version, there is here the condition that we know the covariance, instantaneous covariance term dx dm divided by n. Uh, sometimes you know the the term if this is replaced by the inverse n divided by m. So it depends a little bit if you move from one side to the other or back. Just a trivial remark, yeah, from Ito's lemma, you know, if you just flip this, it will just give you a minus, yeah? So there will be just a minus and it will be a minus gamma. I need this a little bit later. Let's prove the result. So I define um, a stochastic process Y, my adjusted proce stochastic process, which is my Y of T plus, and now I use the same trick as before, integral from little t to capital T, gamma of tau d tau. So I have the terminal condition that y tilde at capital T is equal to y of capital T. So this little t here in my adjustment is the lower bound of the integral. So then I have that if I know y under qn moves to y under QM with a deterministic adjustment to the drift. So this part here is my assumption. Then I have that my adjusted stochastic process, Y tilde, will be dy equals to equals mu dt plus sigma y dw under QM. So it will look like y under qn. So why is that? Okay, so you have dy tilde is dy minus gamma of t dt. Yeah, so minus because 
it is here differentiated with respect to the lower bound. So this um, adjusted stochastic process exactly kills back the drift that you get from the change of measure. It kills the drift such that under the other measure, you have the same stochastic process yeah, or the same increments of the stochastic process as um, under the QN measure. And I have the terminal condition that the two random variables y tilde of t and y of t now agree. So this means that if I just look at the increments, okay, so just looking at the increments means I integrate the differentials, the two random variables, y tilde of capital T minus y tilde of zero and y of capital T minus y of zero, which is just the integral of the increments, they agree they have the same distribution. If y tilde minus y tilde of capital T minus y tilde of zero is looked at under QM and y of t minus y of zero is looked under QN. So since that's the natural one, so since that's the natural one, maybe let's make it just green also here. That's the measure associated with the natural payoff unit. So now plug in that I have chosen the adjustment in such a way that actually this here agrees. Yeah? So y tilde of capital T agrees with y of t. So you can write here a y of capital T. So you see the only thing is that I have a different initial value. So I can add on both sides. On both sides, I can add now plus y tilde of zero. And I have that y tilde of capital T, which is the same as y of t under QM, has the same distribution as y of capital T minus its initial value y of zero plus the new initial value y tilde of zero under qn. Okay, so it's just uh, for the y's, it's just a modification of the initial values. Of course, the drift is deterministic. So instead of integrating the drift over time, you can just change the initial value. Yeah, now I use this and plug it in to my formula. I have the valuation yeah, so I have the valuation formula here, my V on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I start with the natural index initial value. I have my model sigma. I have my payoff function F, but I have the unnatural payment unit M here. So I multiply here with M. I replace the X, oops, I replace here the X of capital T immediately with the G of Y of T. I have my coordinate transformation. Okay, so now I move from the measure QN associated with this numeraire, I move to the measure QM. So if I move to the measure QM, I multiply with N divided by M. So this goes away just for a symbol, yeah. Uh, let me introduce inside a minus y of zero plus y of zero. Okay, so why am I doing this? Because I would like to illustrate that y of t minus y of zero, this is related to my model. So this is related to the increment. So this part here is just related to the increment. Okay. And this part here is related to the initial value. So now I have that if I move from QM to QN, so that was my previous calculation. So I now I move back to QN. It is a change of the 
initial value. So that guy is then a minus y of zero plus y tilde of zero. So I have here a y tilde of zero. And that part here is still the same because integrating the increments is the same distribution. Yeah. So that here and that here is the same because I'm looking here at the same model. Yeah. I just have now changed the initial value. Yeah, now I can plug in again the n. Yeah, so these two guys here, they cancel. But this here is just now the same valuation formula as here on top. So now I have the same valuation formula as there on the top with a modified initial value. So let's make that guy blue with a modified initial value, but with the natural unit. Okay, so now I have the natural unit and the modified initial value on a valuation formula that considers the same model and the same payoff function. Oh, very, very nice little theorem. Okay, so the, the red parts here, they are just the distribution generated by the model. Okay, the other version follows for the special case where g is equal to the exponential function. And now let's conclude by looking at some examples. So the first two examples are the two that we already have discussed. We have discussed the contour in a separate session and we discussed the forward rate in the rears. The last one is a new one and it's also a very, very nice one. Uh, so let me go quickly through the first two and then spend a little bit more time on the last one. Yeah, maybe as a remark, yeah. We have now a very general setup of changing the payment unit, but actually the convexity adjustments, they really disguise in different forms. For example, changing the payment unit can be a change of the, so can be a change of the payment time like we had for the forward rate in arrears where the forward rate was not paid at the end of the period, but it was paid at the beginning of the period. So it is a change of the payment time. For the quantor, we had that it was a change in the payment currency. Yeah? So I was paying the foreign interest rate in domestic currency instead of paying in foreign currency converted with the FX to domestic currency. But it can also be that um, we have a subtle change of the index and the CMS adjustment is something like that, where I pay instead of a forward rate, a swap rate, but there is uh, a way to also reinterpret this as a change of the payment unit. Yeah? So it could be that you pay um, a swap rate instead of a forward rate, which is then the CMS uh, adjustment, for example. So all these things are related to these convexity adjustments. In this section, I will consider log normal models for X. So where I will apply this log normal version, but you can generalize this to yeah, also normal models, yeah, where you have a Bachelier formula behind or whatever. The forward rate in rears. So what was the situation? So we pay the forward rate fixed at the beginning of the period, fixed in TI. We pay it at the beginning of the period instead of the end of the period. I pay it in the unnatural unit that corresponds to the zero coupon bond that is one at the beginning of the period. Uh, that is the my pay of unit I paid at the beginning of the period. The natural one would be the bond that 
is one at the end of the period. And I know that the forward rate is a martingale yeah, under the corresponding measure QN. So the measure that corresponds to the bond that pays at the end of the period. So I'm a little bit in this situation. Now you could think that I choose here this M to be this guy, but um, this is an example where I will not do that. I will make a small additional step. So I like to find the value when I have the unnatural payment unit, the bond that pays at the beginning of the period. But since I can write the bond that pays at the beginning of the period as the bond that pays at the end of the period, plus the difference of the two. And since my valuation formula is linear in this payment unit, it's linear in this payment unit, I can rewrite this as, okay, one part that pays in the natural payment unit and another part that pays in the unnatural unit, the difference of the two bonds. And the reason why I'm doing this is that this part, the difference of the two bonds, if this is my M, then if I divide this by the N, which is the bond that pays at the end of the period. So maybe let's make that green here because it's the natural one. Then the nice thing is that the ratio of these guys is just the forward rate, actually the forward rate multiplied with the period length. Okay, so I immediately have a model for the unnatural unit divided by the natural unit, my dm divided by n, I have a model for this, if I have a model for L. And for L, we assume that we have just a black schultz model. Yeah? So I mentioned I assume a log normal model here for all my quantities. So I assume that dL is L sigma i dw under qn, yeah, under the natural unit. Okay, so now I make the choice as I have stated above. My M is the difference of the two bonds. My N is the natural pay of unit. And now since M divided by N is L times delta Ti, I immediately have that DLI DM divided by N Okay, this is DLI, DLI times delta TI. Yeah? So this is LI, LI times delta TI, uh, delta TI sigma I squared TT. Yeah? Plug, plug back the M divided by N. So you immediately see that this gives you the gamma in our little theorem as being the square of the log volatility of the forward rate. So you see my term is sigma i, sigma i rho with a rho of equal to one because the correlation is equal to one. So that's a nice decomposition to write. Paying at the beginning of the period is like paying at the end of the period plus this difference of the two. And because then I have immediately my gamma. So I can now apply my theorem here to this second part with this gamma. Since I have the log normal process, what do I expect? I expect now a correction factor exponential integral from zero to Ti sigma i squared dt. Okay, and that's it. So paying now in the unnatural unit gives me the valuation formula in the natural unit plus, and this is now the part that comes here from our theorem, m of zero divided by n of zero. So there is a scaling because the bonds have a different timing. Yeah? So there is the timing difference here in this scaling. And then 
multiplied with the payment in the natural unit again with a modified initial value. And the modified initial value is the original initial value multiplied with our adjustment exponential integral from zero to ti sigma i squared of tau d tau. So now you can value a black scholes formula, uh, the option on the forward rate where you pay at the different, different time. You just have to convexity adjust the initial value of the stochastic process in this formula. If you have the special case where the F is just the identity, yeah, so it's not an option, it's just the forward, you get the convexity adjusted forward rate. And you see the convexity adjusted forward rate, interpret this part here as the change in the timing. Yeah? So this part here would be zero if there would be no change in the timing. But if we have a change in the timing, yeah, so we have here an additional part, which also has here this covariance term, which is now a variance term. And you maybe remember the motivation when we start here with the motivation, we could write this also like this. And you see there is here the expectation of L times delta Ti squared. Yeah, so you see there is exactly here the expectation of the squared, which gives me a, a variance. Second example, let's look at the quanto again. The quanto is also a convexity adjustment. So the situation which we had for the quanto, we pay in units of domestic currency. So we pay in the domestic currency bond, but we should pay in units of foreign currency, which means pay in the foreign currency bond converted to domestic currency. So my unnatural payment unit for the quanto was M, the domestic currency bond. The natural unit was N, the foreign bond converted to domestic currency. What we introduced was actually the opposite ratio, N divided by M. And we called that guy the forward FX rate. So it had an interpretation. So since at this chapter, I looked at the inverse of this ratio. We will discover now that it will be a minus gamma, a minus term that pops out if we look at the correlation of X and the correlation of the FFX. Yeah? So it will be a sigma X, sigma N divided by M dt, yeah? but the correlation, a rho, rho dt, but the correlation when in our theorem is flipped. Okay, so if you interpret, say, for example, the inverse of this guy here as the FFX tilde, yeah, so just note that switching from the process X to the process one divided by X gives you another drift, but it just gives you here a minus. So then just apply our theorem. What do we need? We need the covariance term of the forward rate and the change of payoff units multiplied with the correlation. In our theorem, it was a plus integral over this term. But since I'm now replacing the M divided by N with an N divided by M, yeah, it is a minus yeah, because this guy here is actually the inverse. That's here for just the floater. For a caplet, we had the result that replace the foreign forward rate with the foreign forward rate multiplied with exponential minus integral sigma L sigma f of x dt. Yeah, maybe if you like to check that, go back to the derivation 
of our quanto adjusted Black Scholes formula, and you find exactly the same result. So replace the foreign forward rate with the foreign forward rate multiplied with exponential integral minus the covariance of the FFX and the forward rate. So that's the quanto adjustment. So let's do the CFS adjustment, which is also a convexity adjustment in the next session. Thank you. That was it for today.